So I have a quick question for you. When is the last time you've done a marketing audit for your practice? In other words, how do you look online? How do you look from your patient's perspective? And what can you do, do to generate more new patients into your practice? So my name is Dr. Derek Barron, uh, and welcome to Practice Insider's Edge. We work with private practice healthcare business owners to help them grow and scale their practice. Uh, and we do coaching, consulting, and digital marketing. So if you ever have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us. But today I want to share a slide deck with you here where we go over uh, what we call a 60-minute marketing audit. And this is something that you can do for yourself and your practice. So let me share the screen with you here. So again, it's a 60 minute marketing audit. It's just something that you can do uh, simply to help you and your practice grow. So let me get this moving forward here. So audits, uh, you know, serve a huge purpose and now is the time uh, to do everything you can to help your practice thrive. Depending on how you fared through the COVID issue, even though some of it's still continuing, we're trying to get out of it now, and hopefully you have done well. If you haven't, uh, you know, start with an audit of your practice and how it appears online and other aspects of it. Uh, the truth is your practice could probably use some fine tuning and an internal audit of your resources and processes can help to get more of your marketing efforts. Um, and I want to show you what you can do. And it's, it's fairly simple. It'll take 60 minutes or less. You know, start by doing a website review. Uh, it's true that your website is your online headquarters, and that's a good place to start with your audit. That's sometimes the first touch that many people have with you. Typically, it is your website or your social media presence where you get your first touch with your patients. You know, update anything on your website that's outdated or not working the way it should. So here's some things that you should look at during your website review. You know, what's your site's design looking like? Does it look like it's modern in 2021 or does it look like it's from 1997, way back when? Uh, mobile accessibility, over 70% of searches for products and services that people want. And yes, you as a healthcare provider offer products and services that people want on a daily basis. You need to be mobile accessible. What's the navigation like? Is it easy for them to get around your site? What's the speed, the, the loading of it, the site speed? It's really important. Otherwise, people will bounce off your site if they're not happy. With that perspective, something I always tell people is make sure you have a welcome video online because it will help with your SEO purposes because when they go online and they see the video, I don't suggest having it autoplay. People tend to you know, be looking at work and if they see it at work and it starts playing automatically, they're going to turn it off and go to somebody else. So putting a video on there that people can press play and watch is important. Looking for uh, broken or outdated links and doing some SEO optimization. Now your focus should be focus should be making your site as fast and accessible and as useful as possible, especially again for mobile searches. Anything that slows down or negatively impacts the user experience, in other words, that prospective patient needs to be improved. Um, lastly, make sure your website reflects any COVID-19 related um, changes like hours of operation, any changes to your services, etc. Uh, you know, at the time of this, it's April of 2021. We are hopefully finally coming out of the COVID issue. So make sure if you have any, you know, changes that you want your patients to see, like your hours are opening up, make sure it's online so they can see that. The next thing is online booking. Do your prospective or current patients have an ability to schedule themselves online? You know, is it easy for patients to book themselves in? Is your practice just as functional for mobile users as it is for people on a computer? In other words, if somebody is at the grocery store or they're in their yard and they hurt themselves doing spring cleaning in the yard, can they grab their phone, open up your practice website and schedule themselves in? And then is there a checkout process that's really easy and intuitive? That's something that you wanna help focus on as well. Uh, what about booking and payments? Well. You know, you really need to make sure that you are having a couple of areas like these that's worthwhile to pay some, um, pay very close attention to and potentially test it and other products and services that are out there. In other words, there's a bunch of services that can do this for you. You want to make sure that one works well for you and it's cost effective and, you know, test it like as if you were a prospective patient. There are plenty of sites where the booking process is convoluted. Patients hate that, which means you should too. What about payments? Can they pay for your products or services online? So here's the cold hard truth. A difficult payment process is unacceptable. It will cost you sales and patience. 
Your focus should be on making the payment process is process an easy one. So when somebody wants to give you money, when somebody wants to schedule, when they want to buy a product or book themselves in for a service, make it as easy as possible. One, two, three clicks at the maximum. Um, so here's some points to look at. Increasing the security of your payment page by updating your security certificate, the SSL right there in the middle. Uh, adding encryption, including statement about your security, reassure your patients. Some people don't want to enter their information in. And if they don't do that, that's not making the process easy for them. So make sure you're doing that for you. Uh, adding payment methods that are easy for patients to use, including credit cards, PayPal, checks, and mobile payments. Stripe is a great option as well. And some services uh, like your current providers may offer that for you as well. Uh, keeping your entire payment process on your site instead of asking patients to navigate away. That's where using PayPal sometimes takes them off of the page. So you want to make sure you have a good payment processor that's integrated into your site. Uh, fourth, minimizing the number of steps in your checkout process like I talked before. Try and do three steps or less if at all possible. And then make it easier if they're a returning patient that they can pay easier for it as well. That it, it Use what's called sticky contacts so it'll keep their information inside of it. So paying for an online booking should be quick and easy and intuitive. Nobody should have to guess what to do or be left wondering whether their payment went through. What about loyalty programs? In healthcare, people don't always look at this as an option. It depends on what you have in your practice. It depends if you have ancillary services, if you have uh, products such as supplements, pillows, anything of that nature. If you have people that are coming in for consistent care or they have graduated away from pain care and are moving into a step down program in you know in your physical therapy practice or moving into your your gym where they're coming in and getting personal training away from that even as a chiropractor if you're doing more rehab in your practice do you have massage therapy that's there do you have something that they can step into from a loyalty aspect um, they're popular for a reason if you don't have one or if it's been a while since you thought about this is a perfect time to think about it and if you drink coffee and you go to Starbucks they have a loyalty program. Try and figure out a way in which you can include a loyalty program into your practice. Um, and you might have to overhaul the program if you have one. Um, it might not be attractive to newer existing patients. It's gotta be a great offer for them to want to join. It doesn't have a mobile option or offers you know, outdated or subpar rewards. Um, your loyalty program should be appealing to your patients to provide them something concrete to consistently return. In healthcare, this is sometimes a difficult component, but we've done it with others. We can help you do it too if you're interested. Again, you have to have some ancillary services that will work with this for you. Let's talk about search engine optimization or SEO online presence. This is some of the most boring information to talk about, but it's critical for your practice, especially generating new patients. So people rely on Google search to find practitioners in their area now more than ever. They're searching, they're asking Siri, they're asking their Android device, find a chiropractor, find a physical therapist, find a massage therapist near me. You've got to be online and be found. How is your website optimized and how is it set in specifically with your Google My Business page? So if you haven't updated your, your SEO on your page, um, you, it, it's something that if you haven't done for too long, make sure you work into doing that for yourself. Um, so with this, you know, review your online listings and directories, guides, and other places to make sure your NAP, which is your name, address, and phone number are consistent. Even small differences dilute the process. This is critical. However you have your practice listed in your Google listing, your Google My Business listing is the same you want it to be listed across other places. In other words, if your practice like ours was Integrity Sports Medicine, that's the title. You want that to be the same across the board. In other words, you don't want Google to have Integrity Sports Medicine. And you don't want Yelp to have Integrity Sports Medicine, comma, LLC. Those small things are critical for your search results. Claim your Google My Business listing. Make sure your information is up to date. And number three, claim any review site profiles you haven't yet claimed and check all of them to make sure your information, again, is accurate and up to date. You want to update photographs and review sites to reflect any updates in staff or in services. Yes, even in your products. So if there's something that's in there, you know, if you have a new staff member, put a photo of them on there. If you have patients that are, you know, um, standing in there with graduation, if you do, a, you know, a, a whiteboard sign that says my patient uh, is successfully graduated from care because of this. Anything that you can do, you want to make sure that you're doing. 
Uh, number five is review your social media profiles. Update them as needed. Make sure your website link is in there if you can. Make sure you have a link that goes in it that will open up to other sites that you have. You want to just make sure your social media is reflecting upon your business. These changes shouldn't take long, but they can make a big difference in your local SEO. Again, that's your ranking factor when somebody is searching for a provider in their area. Um, it especially makes your practice rank easier on Google. What about email marketing? Most don't look at this as, as something that's important. People think email is dead and social media is better. I guarantee you email marketing is not dead. Many of you may be opening up an email to watch this video. Your patients would do the same. So it's it's a great return on investment. It's inexpensive and it's, a, it's an effective way to communicate with your patients. So here's what you should review about your email marketing with your audit. Your website opt-in form should be short and request only essential information. And I do say, do you have an opt-in form on your site? Whether they opt in for your newsletter, whether they opt in for um, a, a video series, something that's a giveaway, maybe you have a book that you've done or an ebook that you have, but you wanna get name, email, and potentially cell phone number. The reason I say cell phone number is if you do reactivation programs like we've done with our clients, it's a great way to get in front of them right away, especially with the mobile number. People open that up 90% of the time. Email is a 30% open rate. So you want to make sure that you are getting their cell phone number if at all possible. Subcri subscribers who haven't opened your emails in six months should be unsubscribed. Nobody wants their list to get small, but it decreases your deliverability rate if you have non-opens especially if you have a free service, it's maybe not as bad, but if you have a paid service and you have more, um, you wanna decrease the amount of contacts inside of there so you're not getting hurt by the number that's there. A third one is review or create a welcome sequence to send to new subscribers. In other words, if you have a, a three-part video series on the best three stretches to do in the morning to get your day started off right, they would opt in for that, they would get an initial email that says, welcome to our practice, we're glad that you're interested in our three-part series, and then it's going to follow up within the next three days and maybe seven days later and seven days later and seven days later. And you can highlight your services, your staff, and if you get a new video testimonial that's in, you want to send that out. So you always want to be in communication with your patients and also in communication with your prospective patients because some of those people will sign up but not come in to be a member just yet. So consider list segmentation to target the emails to the patients who are most likely to utilize certain services. So for us, uh, we had physical therapy, we had chiropractic, we had athletic training services in our practice, we had spinal decompression. So we could segment that list. So we marketed specifically to those people. If they were a spinal decompression candidate, we wanted to make sure they were getting that message only. Um, so if you don't already have an email list, this is a perfect time to build one. You're literally leaving money on the table by not doing what you can to keep in touch with your current patients, as well as those prospective patients. Now let's talk quick about social media. From a social media perspective, it's common for private practice healthcare owners to think they need to have presence on every single social media site. That's not true. Um, you're better off having one or two sites that you're active on um, than five that could maybe be hitting some people. And it's the ones, that if you like video, try Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. If you like, you know, 160 plus characters, use Twitter. It depends on what you want, but stick with something and be consistent with it. Your social media game is lacking. If it is, uh, it might work to you know regroup and, and chat with your staff on what you can do for that. Look at what's working and especially what's not working. What do your insights say as far as people looking on that? So if your social network is underperformed, you should consider focusing more on the social platforms that you're getting more engagement from. So let's be honest and audit what do, it, audits don't sound good, especially if you are thinking about tax season. Um, it always scares people, but you can make a huge difference in your health and the success of your practice if you are doing an audit and it's going to actually show results quicker than you think. So literally, what are you waiting for? Um, again, you can contact us, practiceinsidersedge.com. You can reach out to us uh, via email. You can also call us or text us. You know, what we do, what we focus on is helping private practice healthcare individuals grow and scale their practice. So if you're interested in getting a marketing audit because you're not sure how to do it yourself, by all means, reach out to us. Like in the comments below, just put the words marketing audit. And we'll get in touch with you as well. If you have any questions, by all means, help us. Because the goal at Practice Insider's Edge what we want to do for you is help you achieve success 
on so many levels. Take care. Have a fantastic day.